So I want to get to the center of the tree. It doesn't do any damage to the tree. Laura Smith turns to the trees for a hidden diary of the weather. Dendrochronology. I study tree rings. The rings really do pop out. This PhD student at the University of Tennessee says, look closely. There's a ring for every year, and every ring tells a story. Measuring the ring width, we can measure their rings and then cross-state them. I mean, they line up to the year. A narrow ring for us would indicate a more dry year. These stories captivate the Tennessee Valley Authority. It teamed up with Smith because it wants to know what our climate was like going back hundreds, up to a thousand years before we started keeping rainfall records. We only know what happened for about a hundred years. In terms of how climate changes over time, um, that's not very much information. The trees are going to allow us a better idea of what happened over longer time spans. If we can understand a little bit better about like, oh, well, there, was, there may have been a period where there was you know, more significant drought or for longer periods of time, we can start to think about how that may impact us in the future. But this research also fills in some other blanks. It's a modern twist on an old project TVA started in the 1930s. That's when it hired Florence Hawley to study the trees and the climate of the Norris Basin. Oh, she's a rock star in our field. <laughs> the first female dendrochronologist. Holly came to Tennessee and began sampling trees throughout the region, but the environment of the time was not hospitable. There were certainly gender discrimination issues with her being a female scientist in the 1930s. Besides this being difficult and tedious work to begin with, she was up against this questioning of her abilities. Even though some of TVA's top scientists said there was nobody better in the world than Holly, when she arrived, her title was associate scientist. And she's essentially saying, you know, associate to whom? I'm leading this project. In another letter, a manager says TVA could hire an engineer, a man, and train him to do Holly's job, because that would be easier than trying to teach her how to be an engineer. It being the 1930s, it was just pretty blatant. Eventually, Holly took a job as a professor at the University of New Mexico and did other groundbreaking research around the country. Yet the work she did at TVA was never published and abandoned the project and the sample she collected. But a couple of years ago, TVA's hydrologist came across this old work and decided to bring the story full circle by getting Smith to continue what Holly started. I feel like I have a lot of emotional investment in this project to do right by her legacy. It's important for young girls and young women to see other women going out there and doing the work. Finishing this research can reveal a range of just how extreme our climate gets, so TVA can make sure it's prepared for a worst-case scenario, and having hard data to show that promise rings true. Understanding historic climate, then use the data for water management. So Smith keeps turning to the forest and sampling old cedars, and carries on a legacy that goes back to the roots of a pioneer, to discover the stories and the secrets hidden in the trees. The fact that we can understand little bits and pieces about the environmental history through tree rings is just, I think it's really interesting and exciting. In Knoxville, Jim Matheny, WBIR 10 News.